Show that can match it. How to name another show that can match it? Everybody from classy to ratchet. He fans like Jamal keep the flame alive. Dennis Lee got the Lake Show locked in five. The Dub K to Augusta GA. Talk everything from NBA to anime. Chat like homies or debate like enemies. It's all fun and games. Just match my energy. Just match my energy. Just match my energy. Yeah. What's good, everybody? Welcome to episode 44 of the Match My Energy podcast. It's your boy, Dennis Lee, a.k.a. Dino Fit Dennis. Hey, it's your boy, Jamal, JC2 Bless. Another week. Um, yeah. This month has been quite interesting. A lot of events has been happening. But before we get Man. into it, please like, comment, subscribe below. Um, let buttons. us know your thoughts, everything you want to here or want us to touch on let us know if you want to come on and see if you can match our energy also we are always down for that as well so looking for guests as always sure. but yeah man let's sure. get into it man uh how you week been okay. i kind of i kind of know the gist of it but you know some of us look darker than others man you um, know you we know. both dark but you know some people look a little look. darker than others Got the little vacation. Somebody you know, got a little the, crispy. The, light, the lights are doing me a little justice today, but uh, <laughs> you know, I did. You know, I got the the vacation glow. Definitely got my tan on uh, last week. Uh, so we had a little little break in there. Um, we went back to Mexico. You, y'all know I stay in Mexico. Um, we went to Tulum again. Hey, dry. <laughs> <laughs> Might a little no. lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that place looked kind of cool. But no, uh, yeah, we went back to Tulum. Um, very fun. We we stayed for six days. The hardest part really was staying away from crypto. We, we had we had like a little team of some of my friends come in to check in on them and my mom. Uh, and they sent us pictures, but like he's looking all sad and stuff. I'm like, I know this is Dang. but <laughs> Either way, uh, so then we passed that. I had a cool time. We went to uh, the pyramid. Uh, well, I guess it looks like pyramids, but the uh, Mayan ruins in Chichen Itza. We went to the beach, of course. Uh, ate a whole lot of good food, man. I basically had a little food tour for myself. Um, also, shoot, I got these masks. Pretty fire. Oh, dang. Yeah. So That's super detailed, we were- too. Yeah, so that was, and that's the coolest part about it. So the dude, um, it was when we were at the pyramids. He he goes, hey, man, because so the kind of sucky part about uh, Chichen Itza is they got vendors all up and down it. So you can kind of, uh, like, look at the stuff. Oh, wow, that looks cool or whatever. But, like, all the way to the side, it's vendors all up and down, all throughout it. And it's a it's a a lot of places. It took us two hours to walk through it. And all up and down, just a whole bunch of people trying to sell you something. So at first, you just kind of like, no, thank you. No, no gracias. Uh, you know, well, that does look nice. You know, you're looking a little bit. But by the hundredth table, you're like, bro, let me look <laughs> at that. I'm trying to read the, the description, man. Right. Like, you know. And so we on our way out. This dude's like, hey, bro. It's funny because like, you know, most of them were speaking to us in Spanish and stuff. He was just mm-hmm. like, hey, bro. He's talking with my Lakers shirt. He goes, hey, so um, listen, you don't got to buy nothing. I'm about to wrap up, honestly. I'm about to leave. It's hot. It was like 99 degrees out there, so I feel no shade. And then he was like, it's hot, but like, I do these myself. I carve it, and and, and I have to like, these like the obsidian, and it's made out of obsidian. I have to put them in water for like 25 days, let it soak, and, and gets a little bit softer, and He's, he paints it and, and carves it all himself. And I was just like, man, that does look fire, you know. And I love art and, you know, yeah. the hustlers, you know, all that all put together. I was like, man, what, what you going to hit me for, man? He's like, man, I'll give them to you for, for $30 American. And I was like, two of them? He was like, yeah, I can do that. So, mm-hmm. like, I really got a steal. Like, and it was like, there was like, right, he was about to say 30 each. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, I was like, hold on, hold on, brother. You know, because also, I know how they are down there, man. You can, you can, yeah. you yeah. can haggle. So, um, you know, we did that. Um, it was pretty cool. We did get into like a, 
a mishap with uh, with airlines uh, on the way out. Man, it was crazy. I'll tell the super fast version of this. Um, so flight leaves at 3.30. We're supposed to leave at 3.30. We get there early like we're supposed to. But the, the Cancun airport is packed. It's, I've never seen an airport this packed before. Because every single flight, not just American Airlines, but Spirit, everybody. So everything's getting pushed back. Now, I chose the cheaper flight, like return flights. Just don't save money. That's how we do sometimes. Mm-hmm. But it had two stops, Austin, Dallas, and then Wichita, of course. You know? mm-hmm. So we finally leave at 6. So that's already three hours delay. We land in Austin about like 9.15. Got to get through customs, this and that. But it actually went through customs pretty fast. They moved us through quick. I was like, man, I could have smuggled a brick in this. <laughs> like, <laughs> the way they acted. <laughs> yeah, you good. All right. Hey, we going to uh, get on smuggling in a minute. Man. <laughs> and so uh, we get through there. We like, yo, uh, we're like, hey, no problem. We're sorry about that. We uh, we got you guys on new flights. We was like, what flight is that? They was like 2.30 p.m. tomorrow. I was like, don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Cause then that's still to Dallas. That means I'm still not even gonna get to Wichita till like 7:30 the next day. Now, we was trying to get home, man. We was trying to get back. You know, we had all this, and it was crazy. So, you know, we hadn't ate since we had breakfast that morning. So we hungry, fed up. Um, we was like, forget it. Cancel my flights. Let me get my refunds on the on the last leg. We are gonna figure this out. So I try to ask if they could fly us to like Oklahoma City or Kansas City or something like that. Yeah. I was like, forget it. Me and Shay look at each other. We just like, we can just go to this rental car place. I was, oh man. We went, we went to the rental car. Hey, let's get the cheapest thing you got. You know what I'm saying? As long as it got four wheels and a gas tank. It is, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was still a nice car though. But uh, yeah, man, we loaded up the tank, got some uh, energy drinks and a little gas station snack. Boom, seven hour drive. We, we got here at six o'clock in the morning, bumping Damn. future. And, and, and Sir, we bought the Sir album, uh, just came out. I listened to a couple of podcasts. Man, we used to was barely making it, but we made it. <laughs> That's so, a yeah. rough one, especially after you just had an amazing trip. You came sure. back, you know, you already kind of like it's a certain tiredness that you already get by traveling in the airport already. So when you yes. made that decision to do a rental car, I've done that. I mean, mine was like two hours. I never had to do, you know, an extended travel like that with rental car. It's just like already in your mindset. It's like, dang, man, I could have been just, you know, sitting on a flight. We would have been back by now. But now it's like, now nah, I'm right. going, you know, driving. That's to add another. Uh, but at least it's two of y'all, I would say. Y'all right, right. We were switching back and forth and stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's a different one than just one person. Y'all had to do. You know, you probably had to do one major stop um, for that that time to travel. So, but yeah, man, I'm glad you made it home safely. Yeah, it sucks about the travel, but at least it was just on, you know, hey. on the backside. It wasn't damn bad right. travel issues. So we did get we did get haggled by the police. You know, they always talk about that down there in Mexico, how like they'll try to harass you and get some money up out you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that happened. While we was looking oh, for yeah. our, we were looking for our Airbnb and, you know, they looped us and was like, Y'all going the wrong way, this and that, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, it's, we're like, hey, we just tourists. We're trying to figure out where this is at. Do you know where this address? Yeah, yeah, forget all that. Uh, we're going to end up telling y'all, we're going to do this. It's going to cost this much money. This, da, 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 da. Kept going back and forth. He, I mean, he's talking to Shay. Like, they speaking in Spanish and stuff. So I was catching, like, a little bit of what yeah. they were saying. So finally, she, he's just like, listen, instead of me just towing it, you just give me, like, two million pesos. We'll be good. And she was like, I don't have that. And then, I mean, I got, like, He's like, I got this hundred dollar bill. He was like, Yeah, that's good. All right. Uh, so what you want to do is go that way, and then you be all right. I was like, Man. Damn. No, don't give me no advice after you just did that. <laughs> just, exactly. Just go. And then so, yeah. the next person could be like, Well, now I need my hundred. <laughs> right. And then the next person gonna send you to the next person. So Man, we did a whole lot of walking. We was like, get this. We we walked like unless we was going somewhere far or something, we you know, it was like, Yeah, we'll just yeah. walk. Ain't nobody get trouble for that. Yeah, I mean that's the well, man, that's really the best thing is the getting a central location where you can walk around multiple places. Yeah, man, um, it's beautiful. That's the that's the best that's the best route to do stuff, especially in those vacation uh towns. Like if it's you know the states with the cities and stuff like that, man. Yeah, you can drive around a little bit more, but um, y'all, I keep trying to get Jamal to come out here with us to these to these <laughs> destinations. This this Negro keep talking about yeah, man, but Florida though, 
I know, but he, he be... You don't get some stamps in your passport. <laughs> and I just got the passport last year. I just, you know, I haven't gone nowhere. But the issue is he'll be like, hey, let's go do, try to do something this summer. And I'll be like, I already got two trips planned. I mean, he's already booked Pencil stuff. Them. Pencil you know, book- them. It's the Florida. That's a <laughs> trash trip, man. Let's go to Costa Rica, man. <laughs> go to the Bahamas. Let's go to That's true. Greece, bro. That's true. They got no uh, kids. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that man. is that's very true. I could just get up and go, you know, take the uh, appropriate amount of time off and go somewhere. But we'll see. I, I definitely want to go. I especially want to go with y'all, especially because y'all already got the lay of the land and all that. It's one of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, we will go back to, to Tulum a third time if y'all want to go with us. If y'all want to make this a group trip, we'll, yeah. Because we'll I'm like, you don't have to guide yourself. It's different when you have people that's with you. you can be like, hey, I'm just tagging along. Hey, I already you know, know the best the best like breakfast spots. Yeah, I so. got the breakfast spots on lot, bro. You gonna you gonna eat good. You go go to the beach. You gonna see some sights. You gonna see some sights. That's so cool, yeah, man, I'm, bro. I'm definitely I'm definitely want to go, man. Especially with y'all. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna have to plan it, bro. I'm gonna have to plan it for sure, man. I ain't gonna be no ten years later. It's like, oh, you finally got there. <laughs> I'm old now. Ten years. I was man. He's like, whoa. He's like, I got two states down here now. <laughs> right. Sure. I live here now. Just go come, come by the house. Ain't it though? Come by the house, man. <laughs> oh, but man, that's too much on me, man. How you been? Pretty good. Mine has not been as exciting, um, but um, it's cooling with the fam. Um, my mom was trying to do some home home redesign. Of course, you know I'm like I love interior design, home decorating. So we've been doing a lot of furniture shopping. She want to do a new couch. She think about doing a new um, a new design for her bathroom. So she has a standing shower. So she's trying to tear that on wall and make it extended. Huge shower okay. there, so yeah, uh, I'm kind of working on some of that stuff, trying to see that, trying to get into that home interior design bag that, that I've been trying to get into. So this would be like one of the projects where I can. Now, of course, I probably won't be doing the work, but I can at least get my vision to her. And you know, of course, we it's her bathroom, so she still has to. In this uh, scenario, I'm saying she's the client, so she would have to agree. But I'm trying to give the ideas and designs and see how it comes out. Um, see how I like it because I've been saying I like that type of stuff, but you know, I haven't really uh dove into that type of stuff besides just looking at, you know, pictures online or going to these furniture stores to be like, hey, this looks good, this looks good. Um, so I was like, this is kind of one of those first personal projects. Um, uh, of course it's near the home. I can actually, you know, be super invested in. So I'll see how that right. go. Um, depends on how I, how it goes and all that stuff. I'll send before and after pictures and we can, you know, if I push on social media or on here, um, see how that goes. So that's pretty much what's been going on here. Work's been crazy. I had to take some stuff out offline, man. There's a lot going on there. But uh, but that's it, man. I've been, I've been, of course, watching a little bit of basketball. It's crazy this year, bro, because it's not like I've been, I paid for NBA League Pass. Yeah. But I have not been watching as much basketball games, full games. Yes, I'm, yeah, 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 still, yeah. I'm still in the social media. I'm still with the highlights. I do turn on, hey, this is the last five minutes of the fourth quarter, something like that. But as far for as sure, yeah. start to finish, even for the Miami Heat games, I have not been, even the TNT. Like, I I don't know if it's, like, starting to be, become more of, like, oh, man, I got to try to get to this game. It's, it's a lot more. It's, we're getting busier stuff. I've also been going to the gym a lot more. So it's one of those, like, I don't know, man. Hurt, really. it's, like, it's tough, man. It's honestly, it's like it's not like when we was like younger, like when we was kids or in high school or whatever. Just like to run these games back, back in the day. Back. Yeah, or, or like you come home and you'd be like, "Bet I, I ain't really doing much. I got some homework, but uh, homework's in the background of me watching the Laker game or whatever." You know what I'm saying? So yeah. now we got work, this, that. Like I know, like even for me, like started watching more full games, but like even when I say full games, probably not the full game. Like I come in second quarter because I was at work, you know what I'm saying? So I get off work a little bit later sometimes now, yeah. you know, different things, life happen. Oh, I'm gonna go out to eat or I'm gonna spend some time with my wife a little bit. Maybe we watch the games together sometimes, but life, you know what I'm saying? Like as much as we yeah. love it, we ain't catching it, you know, but I've actually been watching a little bit more than I, I have in the past. Maybe it's because I've been like on prize picks or something. So I'm just like, man, let me That's also make, sure my, make sure my job going, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy because we, I mean, we talked about it. This has really been like, it really boomed out of nowhere. I ain't gonna say out of nowhere. Gambling has always been there, but the prize sure. picks and the mobile app and like your grandma, your your auntie, everybody's like invested into it because like, hey, 
Well, baby, how do you know this play? You think he's gonna make this? He gonna make this point? I was yeah. like, what should I put? You think Kyrie like, got seven rebounds? You think Kyrie got seven rebounds tonight? Yeah, like, and it's like I was like, no, grandma, I don't think he's gonna have seven rebounds. But um, <laughs> it's, it's one of those. It's like it's just everywhere, and I see it on my social media. I mean, like people that have not, you know, have talked about sports, who watch sports, who are winning. Of course, I mean they put in or asking people around, and they show their parlays and stuff like that, and their winnings, and I'm like. Man, it is it is crazy. I'm not sure if people are tuning into the games or just like they just get the stats and uh be done. If you like yourself that would actually like the game, then of course you're gonna be a little bit more invested into the game as well. Not just like, okay, tell me when the game's open, let me see if I, I hit or not. But um it is crazy, man. I just I didn't see it blowing up the way it did. Yeah, as in like the prospects and stuff like that, but seemed like it's here to stay for a little minute for sure. Unless Man, uh, yeah, let's call it Porter. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, that's what I was gonna... brother. Messed yeah, up or Jonte something. Porter. I messed it up for everybody. Man, and you know the thing is, it's like rigged, though. a lot of people have been doing that, but I think, and it sounds messed up, but it's almost a skill. It's almost a skill to being able to trick off a game and make it look like it wasn't on on mm-hmm. purpose. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Of course, we don't do that. Like, that's not a good thing. But, like, we've seen, like, where refs were able to do it, but it looked a lot more subtle than it yeah. looks now. Or shoot, or players. Like, when, when I saw him miss that, or when I saw him make that three-pointer and, like, cringe, like, dang, he messed up. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I don't who know. does that, bro? Like, that, yeah. <laughs> that's a good shot. Oh, unless it wasn't supposed to be. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, See, the only time. So, go ahead. I'll just finish. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was about to say the only time I seen like somebody like cringe or three is like with Steph shoot and hit like the bank or something like that. He was like, man, that hit a rim. Right, yeah, right, I mean, right. But only the time I'm like, he's still glad he made it, but it's like, nah, I want me a pure shot and then he hit all net, no rim, no backboard. And that's the only right. time you see somebody who wants to win the, the cringe. Well, we may see like teams tanking or something like that. But yeah, for sure. For draft picks, but still, I don't like either one. Like, man, go out there and compete, man. If you don't, you don't. If you do, you do. But it's starting to look just, a lot more in your face now. We noticing it more. Like, you know, like right? let these games play out. And then he's always like he's a two way player, so he's not like you know fully guaranteed that I know of. I think he's two way. Um, so it's like, come on, bro. You're not even. You really already halfway out the league anyway. The NBA gonna use him, should use him as an example if they find that he was, you know, doing this on purpose with the, you know, illegal betting type situation. So it's one of those right. like he's already halfway at the league. I feel like if it's a star, they would have put put like a ten game, twenty game suspension. But for him, they might be like, hey, you we already have really like, the league. We just, we gonna ban you anyway. Like you ain't coming back type deal. Like they could do something really he- really hefty to set the scene because. One thing I was when I was reading the story, I was really interested to see like this is a player that doesn't really play as much. So when his numbers went crazy on the um uh I don't know the winnings. Uh DraftKings. Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah all together. When yeah. winnings went crazy, um, and they was like, Well, that's abnormal for a player like this. I'm interested into like those star players or players that get hefty minutes that are probably doing some of this, but they're not it's not known, it's not it's not seen because people bet on them on a regular basis is what I'm trying to get at. Right, like, right, right. Like, if okay. you're picking on, like, the dude number 12 off the, you know, the 12th yeah. person I'm coming like, off the bench, you like, who even thinks... See, the issue, I don't want to pick on no player, but, like, think about a top, a starter on the team who's on, on a, you know, a top team, and he's been doing this over 10 years. Over that, like, you don't know how his family's in pocket with him. You don't know what they... Yeah. Hey, we're gonna lose on this game, but we're gonna win on this one. So everybody don't win on the same day. You know, it probably been a whole fiasco things, man. Yeah, and they saw like people, like a lot of people were newly trying to do it. So like I think they said like mm. the most you can bet or whatever, unless you got like a special account, is like two thousand. Well, people yep. kept trying to make twenty thousand dollar bets on it, and it's like, oh, you uh, don't even yeah. know the rules. Somebody just told you, hey, bro, go do this. You know what I'm saying? Go. <laughs> And you don't even know. You download the app. You got to do, you know, I guess, like, so I you don't, don't even know, know, know the, how to properly bet. I don't know if it's a, I don't know the laws around it. That's why I already get into it. Because say they do find out this has been like a little, 
a ring, a circle of all this going on. The people mm-hmm. who won, do they have to get the money back now, or it's like who who nah. who's on fault then? Like it's I mean, basically NBA just, gonna ban, uh, well, NBA could, you know what? I guess that could be like what, mean? like some inside insider trading, like like in that's stocks and saying, stuff like yeah. that. That, that. Yeah, that's true. Maybe be like, mm-hmm. hey man, you bet on this, but you also knew or had connection to say, hey, this person is gonna, you know, play bad this game or some indication that he's gonna play bad. Now I think you yeah. also have to have maybe a. Uh, Concrete evidence that you knew that person was gonna play bad. Yeah, it's also true. Like you gotta have some, I think, hard evidence of like text messages or something like that that says, "Hey, shoot, they should man." Something like that. That one Operation Flagrant Fell. I think I mentioned it like a number of times on on here. That mm-hmm. Netflix documentary. Yeah. Basically, they was able to do that all that, and, man. Especially now with all this stuff going on, it really shows you like, hey, how much this is not new, like. Yeah, these those refs were messing up games when uh, Lakers versus Kings in the final or in the Western Conference Finals. Like that was yeah, way back. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't know how they're gonna go to control it, man. Because like I said, this is one of the anomalies, but one of the ones. There's no way to man. Looked, I don't know. And then they, they, I don't know if there is a way. Organizations are making so much money, so it's not like they could say, "Hey, we're gonna stop, stop the guys. We're not gonna do this. We're not gonna put our players in the." You know the prize pick of DraftKings, you know, but it's like mm, I didn't think about that. Both of them making millions of dollars. It's like, I right, we right. definitely gonna stay with them. There's no way. I mean, and it's I'm literally sorry. some mob stuff going on. Like this is like the yeah. mob. Like, yes, we should be able to stop them, but we know like the reality is you can't really stop things like mobs, cartels, and all that stuff. You it's know, a lot. so it's a lot, man. Movie, movie stuff, really. Right, right. I can't wait to see the movie on this come out. At least the doc. Bro, speaking of movies. hmm Man. Diddy. Yo. <laughs> I hate the laugh, but it's crazy, bro. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I know. we'll take this a few different ways, I guess. Uh, okay, so <laughs> for the people under a rock. It? So yeah. for the people living under a rock, uh, the, the Homeland Security, FBI, and somebody else, I believe the DEA, um, Twi- they raided all three of Diddy's homes in New York, L.A., and Miami. Um, he was not there. Um, they showed that him getting away. It sounds crazy, like, you know, some, like, D.C. villain stuff. But uh, he was on his private jet uh, to Cape Verde, I believe. I could be wrong. But, yeah, basically he was on on that Yeah, allegedly. so. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. We don't know. But it did kind of look like it when they showed, when they looked at the flight plan <laughs> right. of his private jet. Um, but, yeah, uh, mainly, and they said that it was for trafficking. So, a good friend of mine it, uh, works for Homeland Security. And so, one thing that I've learned from, you know, talking to him a lot, and I actually kind of want to hit him up about this, um, is they mainly work with trafficking sex trafficking, drug trafficking, stuff like that. Um, which makes sense af- as we're hearing a lot more of, you know, what's going on. They're talking about how a lot of stuff with minors and sex trafficking and then young Miami getting a lot of drugs. Alleged, this is all alleged, you know, but we don't know for sure. Um, so with that, this is crazy, man. What was your like initial reactions to seeing all this? Like the more news is coming out, all the people that Coming forward for saying did he did this and da 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 you know. I mean, I think a couple months before when they, a lot of allegations was coming out about it. At first, I was right. like, you know, I could see that the way he kind of talked, he kind of talked a little spicy already. Um, it's one of those I'm like, okay, and then more and more compounded. And I think the media took it and went with it a couple of ways. Then I took it a little bit more serious. Like I think something actually has been going on and kind of stuff. You see other people kind of been already distancing themselves around it no and then for this sure. happened and i'm like hold on now now this look like a this look like a movie like raiding homes is all over the news social media going crazy memes happening live i'm like this is crazy and then for him not to be there it's also right. even crazy. His sons, I believe, was there and they were put in handcuffs. Yeah, I don't I think, think they actually got like arrested. I think they just put the cuffs on them while they were searching, you know, to make sure they don't move or go somewhere so they keep the eye on them. Yeah, it's, I think it's one of those where 
they restrained them for them to not contact or delete anything on the phone's personal or something like that. Right. If they are yeah. a part of it, they don't want anybody to, uh, you know, do anything while they're doing that investigation. And these houses are huge, so it's not like it's going to be a, hey, 30 minutes, Man. look on the cushion and leave. It's like, no, we look early. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Where's the like trap doors? And... Yeah. <laughs> they said they had a tunnel, tunnel in one of those houses. A tunnel? Exactly. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm like, Dude, we talk about super billing. Like, this is super billing. You got you got multiple houses, you got money, you got private jets to go anywhere. Um, but yeah, once the jet was, like you said, his flight was going to the Caribbean, that's when I was like, man, this is crazy now. We don't, nobody still can confirm if he was on that a plane. But one thing I've been seeing online, and it's kind of tough because once you see stuff online, you don't know if it's true or not, is that um, they have probably been looking at him or his activities for a, a minute now. And they waited for him to be away from all his home, all his houses to do the invasion. Yeah. I think yeah, that's yeah. what I think that's what you know really went down was like, hey, he, we look like he's about to leave. I don't know if they thought he was gonna escape somewhere. I just did wanted to make sure he was out of those houses at the time they raided. It's what I'm well, because and a, a big you know, thing I don't is know. knowing big thing is knowing like when these when those letters come to your door, the 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 they just say FBI, blah, blah blah. When they come to your door, it's not like when the police comes. It's not on some suspicion of. It's not. We think we might got some. It's, it's not like can we look around? Listen. It's like no, we are looking around. <laughs> we know. It's also like we already know what's in here. We're just coming to get it. We already like this investigation yeah, we just got is a about concrete. Yeah. So we mm-hmm. already know. We already been following you for months years decades depending on what's going on like shoot even right. like like the like the young truck like young thug rico case and all that like they said they was following them for 10 years they, which is kind of right. off to me like so like you was letting these people make commit this crime commit this crime like you was watching up oh, there goes that okay there goes this murder there goes this whatever and y'all just let it happen i mean so that's a I little mean, weird but, but think about those the tv shows that was yeah. one of the things i always looked at because of course they say it's fiction, of course, but it's like you did get this idea from somewhere, fifth of the law and right. orders. And it's one of those, like, they'll get, uh, and this is, I'm bringing it super simple into like a, a small city. You have a drug lord and you have those, you know, some drug dealers around them and stuff like that. And it's like, they will, they'll keep on putting out the drug, the small drug dealers out and out there until they, somebody out, a big drug lord in that region. And I'm like, right. But you still we want to allow on that price. community. You still allowing that community to be devastated because you don't want to ruin the whole right. operation. Overall, it's kind of one of us like, okay, do you want this one block to be fine, or do you want this whole state or this whole region to be, you know, fine? Right? Like, yeah. Yeah, but it's taking you it's ten like, years to get that state or region. So I'm like, we didn't lose yeah. dozens, thousands uh, of people. So many line. overdoses and so many yeah. people on drugs in jail for breaking the houses because they. You know, like, for make sure. it make sense. I was like, I it's just tough. I was like, if you take all the small, or even in this me, case, or even in this case, this case specifically, they're talking about how he's been like sex trafficking and, and all this stuff horrible with women and, and men and all that type of stuff. So it's like, so if we're just sitting here watching, that means that we're watching and waiting, like while he's doing this to these people, to these underage girls and boys and this and that, like all these victims get traumatized so you can build up a healthy case. And it's tough because if, I think, if this is what happens, if this is what really happened, right, I'm gonna just right. keep saying that. Yeah, we don't we don't know how operations work. We're not inside of that. We just a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows, and what we know from sure. America basically is how we piecing this together. Yeah. But also, it's one of the things is like I feel like there are they did this big bust because they feel like they already have you know what they like you said are trying to go find, but they're trying mm-hmm. to put a huge case of a list of all this stuff they. Had found or even uh, gathered, put it in front of him so he can expose more people. I think that's the ultimate goal. It's like, hey, we going we, we, we sorry, it's gonna be you, but you gonna have to give us a lot more because we're not letting you go scot free. But you know, you're not. Yeah, down I mean, also, you know, some, they, do you want me I to put my? Like he, I feel like a whole list may come out of his that's, associates and stuff like that. So that's what I was yeah, I was gonna say. Do you want me to put my conspiracy theorist hat on or you know, put it on real right. quick? Put it on real quick, you know. <laughs> All right. So if y'all don't see us anymore, just let us just, just know <laughs> we got so, a little too deep. <laughs> one of the things that I've been noticing 
like, A, yeah, I'm not going to say Diddy is innocent or he was trying to take over this. I'm not going to be on that. You know, like when Bill Cosby did his stuff, he was, they was like, what are you trying to buy NBC or whatever? I think that when he started ruffling feathers with like that whole like liquor deal and he mm. started suing them and, and, and he That's started Ciroc, doing right? too much and uh, yeah, but it was like their, the company over Ciroc. So like, okay. like there's this whole, like most, most uh liquor companies aren't just that one, right? It's like right, a branch right. of, you know, so there's that, but it's also these investors up here who rub shoulders with these people up here and the people that he already was next to the Clive Davises, the Andre Harrell's, I think they're both past, but, um, but also those big connections of like, not just a level, but like double triple a level people who get, get to get away with things. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's kind of like on some Epstein type type of time to where, mm. yes, he's bad, but we also got some names on this list. We also got some names that he could, that he could tell on us about. So now we almost got to get him out of here somehow, some way, mm. but we'll start by discrediting him. It's kind of like when you say like, he it. might be a smaller fry. Yeah, well, let's talk about a, the other example. Yeah. He's pretty big, but the bigs that Compared we don't what, know. Yeah. yeah. The, the heads of Ooh. this and this and this, you know what I'm saying? I ain't even, like, I, I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't thinking that way. I was thinking PD was a bigger fish, but you I mean, he, he's big to he's us. He's holding well out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hit it in a deep blue sea. You can't even know. We don't even have a name associated with that type of whale, that type of species, mm-hmm. but... But he got the this. list to tell us. He got the list to tell us those, those species. Or you can put the pieces together. Wow. Wow, man. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like when that, so like, it also made me think of the Epstein list. They, oh, they're releasing it. They're releasing this. Da, 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 da. Did not happen to those other people. Right. Did not have this. You know what I'm saying? It's like the names came out. They came and went. And we just moved on. And the way that the news is pushing this, pushing this, pushing this. Like, yeah. I don't remember the news going this crazy with Harvey Weinstein or, F- I mean, of course, Epstein, there's a whole thing. Even with Harvey, like, yes, they did, but they also kind of like, I think it may also be that like, that we follow a lot of like black pages and stuff. So we'll see like the black people making the jokes about the thing. So that may be why That's we see it in our face a whole lot, maybe. But I also think the, I don't know, there, there's a certain push in the algorithm that's a lot different from a lot of the other people with this. Like, even with, and I don't want to make it just seem like a race thing. But even with uh, Russell Simmons, the thing we kind of whispered, mm. heard about it. He moved to Bali and there's no extradition there. So it was just kind of like, I don't know. So what's next? Mm. What was so-and-so talking about? What, what song came out? And we just kind of moved past it. Because Russell Simmons is one of those super, super, super high up names and connected to a lot of people that you're just kind of like, maybe I sh- maybe we don't talk about it. You know, maybe, you know, because it's like, and one thing I've noticed is not just uh, one thing I've noticed is also the people that aren't saying anything like condemning or defending. They're just people that, that you saw Damn right up underneath them. A lot of people that you saw with your, they arm around them and up against them and this and that. There's a lot of people that are very silent right now that we were like, why isn't Nelly? Why isn't Jay Z going? You know, one way to hey man, I don't condone that. Hey, no, I wasn't even around for yeah, that. I, I was at the really party, but I didn't go to the like that one dude, like uh, Uncle Luke. Man, I, I, hate like, those. I also feel like it is very convenient that like everybody shows up to these parties and are having a good time and go. Oh, it's eleven o'clock. Guess it's time for me to go. When they're but even if they are leaving early, then they also already know that something goes down after hours. That's the thing, right. too. Or y'all not party. telling, y'all not, yeah. yeah. At two like, I ain't gonna be part this. of it, but I know what I know what goes down is basically what they no, be I'm saying not as tell, well. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, yeah, part I'm leaving, of it. but I see who's staying type like that. Right. Hey, that girl know. over there is 13. Mm, that's whatever. Like, nah. I think a lot of people, and that's all, you know, celebrity Hollywood, they all know a lot enough to be dangerous and they also know how to be in and out situations where they don't need to be for the most part um but yeah it's 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 crazy bro i didn't i think the issue with us and our generation is that or people in general it's just the attention span that has shrunk to 10 seconds and that's yeah. just that's how it is and the issue i mean i'm glad i ain't tiktok but it's the same with reels and everything like that we look at this we get a little funny 
you know, I forgot that little um the endorphin or the dopamine. Yeah, endor- kick. And, yeah, that kick that you get from watching the video on that high for like 10, 10 seconds and you don't on to the next one and you just keep on building that up. I'm like, it's the same with these stories. Of course, the stories are long, but once you see that little all these memes and stuff about uh Diddy and all this stuff, you know, you get a little 10 minutes and then on to the next story because I mean sure. they have the documentary about the naked loading. I'm not sure if you've seen seen that. I haven't um, watched it yet. I'm, I'm I really want to. We can talk about it, but I, I know that I it's... Haven't, I haven't watched it yet. I feel like you got to be also on the right side of mind. I was like, people, this is not right. a fictional like type of um. Okay, this is a new drama that came out. Go watch it like you or something like that. I'm like, this is a real documentary that actually happened that we, as ch- children, or I mean, at that time, children, you know, looked up to these some of these uh, uh, kids and these. And wanted to be like these people in Hollywood. So um, I think it's going to be an emotional roller coaster for some people, especially if you had super strong connections to them as a child and growing up. Right. It was like, a lot of people, I want to be like tuned them. in to Drake and Josh and yeah, I was like, like so, and, you know, yeah. But it's one of those, like, that's a huge story as well. A lot of, that guy, I've got, I don't know the guy's name, but he's been coming out saying stuff like that. He said, sorry for his actions. I'm like, sorry, but I'm like, are you like, go to jail, like brother? I'm saying it's like a whole bunch of stories that just keep going on and on. And this is just, I mean, it's always life, but it's like right now, it's like with social media, we just see it in our face so often now. We're like so mm-hmm. numb to a lot of it. And that's why I tell people, especially in that uh in February, don't don't con- you know, could don't condemn yourself to like black trauma the entire time because they'll keep showing in your face. And then you'd be like, no, that's real. You didn't realize you just watched 30 videos in an hour span. Of all this black trauma, and right. you know, you're going on with your day thinking it's all peachy. I'm like, in the back of your mind, you'd be like, dang. So it's the same with these news stories and stuff like that. It's also one of the reasons I try to stay away from the news because it's kind of depressing, but you try to be informed, like not try to be on social media yeah. anymore, but it's, it's like, like you like, gotta find the, the a balance. You gotta find it's a balance, tough. yeah. Because I find myself that's what, shoot, that's one of the reasons why. I, I've been watching so much like cartoons and anime and 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 uh, post apocalyptic shows and stuff that has nothing to do with this current reality. Right. Because I ain't no to, spin off nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I have to get a, an, an escape, you know, sometimes because man, and I want and I'll we'll go back to Diddy in a second, but um, there was something that kind of like I randomly woke up and I don't know why my face, my ADHD brain or something or my I'm not get hyper fixated on something, um. I don't know if you saw like the I'm pretty sure you did actually the the Baltimore Bridge. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that collapsed and and how sad that was. And we're trying to, you know, they're trying to get the bodies, mass casualties, and all that. Um, but I saw when the mayor of Baltimore was talking, A, the way they handled him, but also a lot of people's um, a lot of people's like titles. I think it's more right-winged people or race mm-hmm. racist, racist people. I'm gonna just say it like that. That yeah. are saying DEI mayor, diversion something something, but a lot of them are saying didn't earn it mayor, and it sucks because my mind went down this deep thing about like how tough it is that even if we do fight hard enough to because I keep seeing stuff like that in the news, I keep seeing people say, hey, if I see a black pilot, I don't know if if it was if it was just a diversity hire or it was just this, and it yeah. sucks because it's like hey. Diversity hires also do help people get at uh get opportunities that they otherwise wouldn't have gotten. But it also makes you look like makes people look at you like, did you just get that because of your color? But even even without that, that's not a diversity hire. That was an elected official. I was a person who came from the bottom right. and did it. Most of the actual official, most of the actual politicians are, I guess, people who didn't earn their didn't earn their spots. There were some rich people or some people that got it passed down who got into, got into the college that they went to because their rich ass daddy was donated a wing. And even though they're idiots, they got to get, I mean, shoot, literally George W. Bush got all this, everything that he got up because of his dad. So, so we never say DEI there. I, we know what DEI is actually standing for now, but it d- really does like make me like kind of feel hopeless sometimes. Cause like, even if like, let's say I get a loan or I get a grant because I don't know. They're giving black veterans stuff for, you know, help me with a bigger gym or something or somebody decides, hey, we want to give extra advertising to black podcasts and they give us podcasting or advertising money or something. 
then people just be like, well, they just got that because they're black. Like, and it's just, you know, and it's just, yeah, it sucks that that's, you know, and I see that on the news and it just brings me down a whole lot because it makes me feel hopeless. Like, bro, even if I become successful, even if I do whatever, even if I become a politician, like I thought about when I was a kid, they're going to be like, well, he ain't really earned that. He really don't know what he's doing. Even though people put lots of hours and years and hard work and study and sacrifice into their life. Yeah, it's. It's a never ending battle, man. I don't know how we will ever get out of it, to be honest. It is can be discouraging, yeah. but you just got to control what you control in your own circle. That's all I can tell people, especially when I mentor young, younger black kids. It's like they feel the same way. They kind of feel helpless. It's like it don't matter what I do. They're going to look at me because of my skin, like how do I can be at top of excelling. I was like, we have to try to continue to push forward, you know, move that needle if we can anyway. It's, it's always going to be something like the mi- minority will always have something. I got on a shirt. It's fitting. Black women matter uh, for, I mean, we still didn't know. Women's month. But it's a bigger thing as well because the way you talk about it, and that's one thing. I mean, shout out to Jordan, you know, Taylor. I've been looking at that, their podcast. They're touching on a little bit more personal stuff. But one thing I wanted to bring out was that they was also talking about women when they get into certain positions. A lot of them look at it as, is, is it a pretty face? Did she do something with somebody to get up to that? So it's like, right, is that right. plus the same stigma, you know, the same um, things they tell us about black men is like, or minorities is like, hey, did they get there? Are they a diverse hire? So we got that attached to it, but they also got that extra layer of, you know, sex appeal or, you know, looks or what did she get to get to that level? How did she get to that so quickly? And they just diminished all of our, you know, past experience. And that's what, it really sucks, man. It's just like, it's tough. And that's why I tell people, because sometimes, especially, you know, working in corporate America, you may be the only one in the room, but, you know, try to make it encouraging so that going forward, you won't be the only one when you leave type of deal. It's it's, it's right. one of those like, and it's tough, because like, yeah, when you try to get promoted or go up to or the ranks and you look side, and you're left and right, you're like, man. Work my way to get up here, but now I'm like I'm still in the back of the seat, back of the bus for mentality. It feels like still, right. so it's like, but yeah, I was like, but if you don't get up there, I mean, the next wave of generations would would don't get up there because it's 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 one of those things you want to encourage somebody to be up there, and they be like, hey, I've seen Jamal Dennis up at those ranks. I know I can try to expire to be up there alongside him. It's one of those mentalities where and. It's tough. I can go on and on, but it's also two different sides because some people get up there and be like, I don't want to see another brother up there with me. And I'm like, man, no, hey, you got to yeah. open the door and bring them as well. It's like, so some of those, you do have to have that mixed mentality. I think we have a, you know, crab in the barrel majority of us um, that we have to get out of it. It's more of like, hey, I'm build myself up in the right way. Show the rank, show how the, these younger uh, individuals can get up there with me. And we build around ourselves. So when we look around and we like, hey, we are more comfortable in those areas because, hey, we worked hard. We got up here. We did it the right way. Um, instead of just, you know, on the other side, it's like, OK, it's going to be one of them. So I, I'm going to train you up until I leave. And then once you leave, when I leave, then you can go back. You can go up there. I'm like, that's not the mentality that we should to take on, man. It's all that to say yeah. we should stay encouraged uh, is definitely Light, light at the end of the tunnel, man. But we just have to, we got to understand that it's not only for ourselves, but it's also for, I say the next generation, but it's also for the pre- the previous generation above us uh, uh, as just well. Just see it's it and just, go, I'm glad we finally came here. Right. And we it's not so it much of this. like, yeah. that's one thing I hope we, I think sometimes we focus too much on it's like, this is what we control right now, but we're trying to make it better for the next generation. I was like, no, we still in our current generation, we have a lot of life to live still. Um, and then we mm-hmm. also we can boost the, you know, mentality of an older generation because, you know, we still got that generation of grandmas and grandpas that are raising the children. So if they still had that mentality and they re- raising the next generation, then they will still also have that mentality. So if we make a shift, man, you know, I know we talk a lot, but it's like this is some some of the things that we we can we we deep dive into as well. I mean, we talk about like this stuff offline. It's not just not right, just right, basketball right. all the time. I and mean, we'll get on basketball, but it is some stuff like this where we yeah. try to uplift one another as well as bros, man. 
And let me make the shift real quick. Let me make it. Let me make it. So <laughs> going back to Diddy real quick. Um. So how did yeah, you feel mind. about? How did you feel about like with them? Uh, how did you feel about how they were like? How people have been freaking out mostly about like the Meek Mill stuff for the Usher. Like I feel like all right. I'm put it like Usher. this. One thing. I, one thing I've noticed is like they they're really getting on how he's been messing with like how he messed with allegedly. Diddy or did he mess with Meek Mill or Usher or Justin Bieber? And mm. that's what he's being crucified the most about. And I'm not saying that that's like not bad. Yes. But yes. there's also murders in there. There's also shootings. There's also like sex trafficking. You know, there's all these. There's, yeah, that's the. I think. It's like people hear all that and they go, oh, that's, dang, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. And they're like, hey, whoa, what? Like it's just like yo, this guy. It is people. tough. What? It's really crazy, and I think, like I said, I think we just got numb to some of these type of allegations, especially from figures like that. Because I'm like, yes, it's crazy that we have celebrities that have grown up and have gone through some things, probably or allegedly with Diddy, but we choose to focus that as a community over. These other things that will actually, you know, be more traumatizing to dozens, if not hundreds more people than the three or four people that we named. Right. It's quite crazy to me. I think because, yes, we can put a face to those individuals. We're like, okay, let's attach ourselves and say, hey, this is what this is crazy, even though it's kind of it's it's quite I don't know. It's a whole other another. It's like it's it's like because (laughs) we focus on McNeil being gay instead of him being maybe. Uh, assaulted, you know what I mean? Like, or right, or or the usher. Fact that, it's like, or even if it was out, but even if that was a thing, what if that was, what if that was a consensual thing that they just didn't want coming out? Right. Then it's a whatever. Okay, literally. Okay, so your shirt, Black Women Matter, right? Did he shot a woman in the face, and Shine went to jail for it. Shine went to prison for it. Nobody cares, right? <laughs> like, we just, I don't know. It's just like if he's a villain. There's so many other things. It's like if you were watching Batman and you saw like the Joker just be the Joker and do all this crazy stuff. And then like you saw him litter and then you were like, look, yo, did you see him litter in that last episode? Right. It's like, well, right. I mean, yeah, he also like blew up his know. goddamn city. <laughs> right. Or like if you watch the killing joke and out of all the stuff that he did in the mm. killing joke, that's what it's like. No, did you see what happened to Barbara? But you're tripping about the littering. Okay. Exactly. Like, like this is yeah. like a a feather in a pond. <laughs> like you probably won't even notice the little wrinkle compared to all the stuff right. that um he got going on, man. It's it's wild. Like I said, I think the only reason is because we actually have put a face to those individuals, but like I said, we have For faces sure. to other actions that he had, but we still don't I guess it's just like people those, choose so. to trip about that over that is what I'm I guess is what I was thinking. Like and also, I mean, with this, I don't know if they have him in custody or not, but I'm also interested to see what other, like, where would this go? Because I don't want it to be like another year and it's dropped off and it'd be like, all of a sudden be like, did y'all remember what I did, did thing? I was like, what are the... Honestly, I feel like this case will probably thing, take man. years. I think it'll take a few years for everything because they'll keep pushing things back. He got a lot of money to uh, motion to do this. No, we need more in discovery. Or we, you know what I'm saying? So like these, I mean, shoot, even something like, the Young Thug case has been going on for, I don't know, what, at least two, three years, something like that. Yeah, two, three, yeah. Which is crazy. It's crazy. And this is Young Thug. Like, we don't, even, we don't even talk. Uh, it don't. It don't even feel that long, but it's crazy. So, yeah, yeah uh, man, I don't know, man. Uh, moving off Diddy, um, still still music. We can still go music. Also, okay, okay, my bad. Okay, Before no, go ahead. Okay. We cannot say no Diddy. We cannot make this a thing. Please, bro. That's true. Please. Get off of that. I'm gonna put that into the into world. Please, we have to move past that. We cannot. I, yes, yes. Bro. A number one. It's corny. I'm gonna just start there. That's corny. Yes. That's it, it's stupid sounding. Y'all, y'all. It's a reach. you it's really have to force that to say that. And B, I get what y'all trying to do. Y'all trying to take it off like the no homo thing. Don't you know? Which I don't really like that either. I'm starting to get tired of it. Or even like a different pause. version of pause. Yeah. Yeah. But number three, you're kind of like like minimizing what he did you know like it's like if you were to say like because like Dahmer messed with boys I was like if he was like yeah man 
Like that dude was trying to talk to me, no Dahmer. Like, yeah. It's like, bro, there's more to what he actually did than what you even tried to say right. that to. But then like, he also like they yes, he got a negative tone to it, but she also put more power into the word Diddy as well over time. If it does catch on, mm, if that makes sense. So it's that's like, real. That's real. Don't, yeah, yeah. If he really is the yes, monster, we shouldn't be giving him so much pedestal raise. Exactly. I'm like, like yes, right now it's a joke, it's fun, but like I've just seen too many people and too many posts about it, and the people are like, it's one of those like it may catch on. And I don't want it to catch on. I was like, we just gotta stop. So even if it's just a local viewers that watch our stuff, you know, whatever. Do not please get off of it, man. Please, yeah, no, it's not. it's not cool. It's, it's one of those things where you're gonna cringe, you're gonna cringe. Like, have you ever had moments? Me and Matt were talking about this, like, where you ever had moments where, like, you look back on your life and be like, yo, that was so cringy what I did back in this, right? But when I walked yes. into that girl, Everybody. like, when I said that, yeah, those <laughs> moments, where you're everybody like, has that. Look. I was like, I did that's, not just say that's that. gonna be you, <laughs> it's gonna be you, or like, dude, stuff where I'll be like, I can't believe I said that in fifth grade, like, I still, like, to this day, will be like. Why did I say that? I'd be saying that like last week. I'd be like, I know I did not just say that, though. What? Yeah. For the people? <laughs> they, right? They looked at me weird, too. I saw it. I caught that. They tried to, you know, they spared me, but I felt it. But uh, Yeah, but that's what that's what saying no Diddy is going to be for you. Like, you're going to be like, man, why was I saying that, bro? That's too much. Like, Right. So just spare yourself now. Don't do it. But yeah. Right. Uh Yo, in music, I haven't, well, okay, I listened to the whole album, because like I said, like, we had a long road trip, um, but the main thing everybody was talking about on Future and Metro Boomin's collab album, um, We Don't Trust You, which people are already speculating is the whole album is like a diss album towards Drake, because, I don't know, I guess it allegedly has something to do with messing with the same girl or whatever. And- yeah, I saw that, yeah. Which is also crazy. Y'all beefing over girls, man. Whatever. I'm like, hey, okay, but hey, so whatever. Beefing over y'all beefing over bartenders from man. But actually, I mean, that's also a big thing because most fights between men is because of women. Because of women, man. It don't matter what realm it could be. I don't know what area, what industry you are in. That's what most beefs usually between men. Long lasting beast. How about that? Because you can have a little beef on the court or something like that. It'd be like 10 minutes and y'all get, you know, going to eat. People, people, here, people here be getting but killed that's crazy. over girls. That's what I'm saying. Those killed. real beasts usually happen yeah. because of that. Crazy, no, that's man. real. Um, but yeah, but the most exciting part of it, of course, uh, and the most talked about right now is. Uh, so the coolest part, if you listen to the album before, like all the stuff came out, they didn't put any of the features on there. So it was almost like a surprise when it came up. Like Lamar on their song like that. Um, and y'all can go to, on the on the sites and or watch the videos for different breakdowns. But either way, I mean crazy. <laughs> man, so you won't get it I on also, first. I also set this up. So there was a couple of you, you might catch on first listen. You definitely gotta do a few different listens in there and a couple of the double, triple, quadruple entendres. Whatever. I also somewhat wanted to set you up. So as a Kendrick Lamar hater, how did you feel listening to this? And like, Let me about clear this, this up this right song? now. I'm not a Kendrick Lamar hater. I just don't listen to his music as much as the next fan. I was like, I'll catch it every now and again, but usually I just it's not my go-to artist to put in the car. But this track here got me looking at J. Cole like, please respond. This is no, one of those, sure. like, this, even if it is directed more to Drake, J. Cole, he just because some, he you're, on that, you're gonna have to for the sake. I'm like, Drake, I Yo. feel like I feel like he's gonna have to have a rider to go back and forth. J. Cole, you know, you can you can at least compete, you know what I mean? That's the only thing I'm like, go back, defend yourself, leave Drake out of it. Don't bring Drake and J. Cole on my brother. Don't try to be on some, yeah. My brother y'all can't be on the same song and then go back. You gotta be J. Cole, clear your name, get out of it. He said, Hey, I can hold my own. I'm at least top two. I'm out. Drake, you gonna fight top three, whatever. Yeah, I think because here's as a Kendrick Lamar. When he said money, power, respect. The 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 Mm -hmm. last one is better, type of thing. It's like say he basically was like saying, like, yo. I know you got more money. I know. I know you got, 
You know, I know you got your number ones because you, you you do the whole pop thing. But we talking about rap. We talking about lyrics. We talking about right. can you spit bars? So that, do do are you respected by the other rap by your peers of rappers? Not guys the hey man, I love the hotline bling or whatever. No, 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 no. Because that's first, I, mean, I ain't gonna lie. I used to put Drake as a pop star for the longest until people was like, no, he's technically a rapper. I was like, I still put him. I kind of put him I, in the. I think star he's a pop star. I think he's a pop star, man. I think that that's that's what that is. Um, he just. I think a lot of times people are slow to give. I don't care. I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna say put the race thing in there, but people are slow to give black people the pop title. I've even seen where they well, even like, like Bruno Mars. They've been they. I mean, we. I think I. I he ain't pop star to me, but a lot of people been trying to say no. He's you know R and B or he's like. Just a singer, but I'm like, what? Right. It's literally, like the definition of it. He's definitely a pop, but he makes pop music. But like, or even like, um, how a lot of times you'll see like, you know, like when they have like a, a celebrity and they have like their name and they have like what they do underneath or whatever. Like Leonardo DiCaprio, actor. They'll mm-hmm. have like T Pain, rapper, and I'm like, isn't he a singer? Like, you know, like he's a singer. Like, Man, so many different. Too. Ty Dolla Sign. They'd be like, Ty Dolla Sign, rapper. And it's like, guys, these guys are singing. <laughs> these guys are R&B singer, but they're just like, eh, black, so rap, right? Right. And so, uh, but no, uh, first off, let me, because I'm already a big Kendrick fan. I want to say, how but, was your take on it? So first off, before, the, before I even heard him, the beat, because okay, so most of the other beats, most of the other beats on this album, they're pretty, they're pretty good. You're not gonna like, oh, it was mid album, whatever. It was it's a good album for what you listen to future for, but this beat is way different than any other beat on the album. So you kind of on your chill future, like not the hype future, it's kind of like the chill future. There's a couple little chant songs like that gonna get you up a little bit. But when this beat come on, it's different. It's mm-hmm. different. So and then future come in there. And he talking stuff. So it's not just, yes, the Kendrick verse was crazy. But literally, Kendrick could have played the Uno reverse on Future and, and did the uh, on this. And this still would have been hard. Mm. Because the beat was, dude, it was hard when, when, when Lil Wayne did this on Drought 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, when you see me in that video saying compared to two. See, that's why I say that's interesting tape because I've only heard the... That that song, you know, because it's been yeah. going around. I didn't listen to the other the uh, other songs on the album, which nobody else is talking about. So it's a different perspective you have because you're like people. If people was like, okay, this is how the album gonna sound, they go the rest of the album and be like, nah, right. this ain't this ain't like this ain't like that. <laughs> right? No, I mean, but, uh, but yeah, no, there was a bunch of different. Like, I mean, there was. There's still some on there, but like that beat and then the beat switch when Kendrick got on there, the way he even like his. Cadence. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, this is a different type of Kendrick. You did not have to come this hard. Man, what's that? Um, but I gotta look this album up. I think his cousin. Um, oh, uh, yes, they had that little switch up on a lot of on his album. Him and Kendrick. Mm-hmm. I, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. with that. They I do that a I, lot. Like, see, but, I don't keep up with him that much. But I'm like, I, I got a little Kendrick on the phone. I just don't be. It ain't. The, <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm sure no, 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 no. My cousin, my cousin Kid, my cousin <laughs> Kid, uh, Kansas Kid. Uh, you know what? He'll probably say it himself too. He don't like Kendrick. No, he's like, I don't think he's as good. Like, he'll say he he don't think he's as good as people. Like, he's but they're around the same age, and he does music, so he's like on that competitive type of thing. Like I can still hoop on. Like I'm a better hooper than him type mm-hmm. of thing. But um, no, I really doesn't like Schoolboy Q. That's a whole other conversation. But. Wow. I'm like, brother, what? No, so I kind of want to know how he feels about brother, this. Brother. <laughs> like, what? Oh, man. But but it's tough. Nah, I mean, it's, I think at least man. on this side of the list, this side of the U.S., when people ask who's your favorite artist, Kendrick Lamar usually ain't on the top of the list. It might no, be no, the for top sure. five, I get that. top 10, but when you start, a lot of people, and I think it's regional as well. I mean, we are close to no kind. A lot of people say J. Cole. And then this is why I know it's one of those like J. Cole or Kendrick Lamar. It's like they also put them like right at the back to back because it's like, well, if you like J. Cole, 
it's another lyricist over on this side that you know you like is you should like Not as for well. sure. And I feel like they they put the two interchangeably sometimes instead of just like J. Cole, whatever, whatever. His Lamar. Yeah. It's like, no, they want to put them back to back because they don't want to seem like they're hating on one or the other. I'm like, you like what you like. If you don't put it in the car, you don't like them as much as you think. That's all I say. I think so. Okay, I get it. I get what you're saying. But you can you respect think- the person, but you just don't rock with that person as heavy as you think uh, as other artists. It's kind of like to me, and, and I know like, I think your friend you showed me that he like kind of compared them basketball like to basketball players, and oh, this isn't my comparing. Angelo. This isn't me comparing them to like like their NBA counterpart, but I kind of think of it like how a lot of kids nowadays are like, we think Paul George is the goat, or we really like him. We, you know, what I'm saying. But it's like, but if we're being honest, we know LeBron's better than Paul George, right? But y'all like y'all like Paul George more than you like. Or even like a Jokic or something like that. So it's like, yeah, you like you like Paul George more, or you like watching Lamelo Ball play more. But we know who's the better at the sport, right? Okay, okay, I got you. Yep. Like it's like we know who's actually better at doing the thing, right? Because I think I think Kendrick is better at doing the thing. Like you say, you like hip hop. You have to acknowledge that Kendrick is one of the greatest or dopest rappers. But that don't mean you have to like. You don't have to. He's not in my like, favorite. Like, he ain't, yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah. That's yeah what I can tell you who I think base. is the top five best basketball players, but I could also tell you who my top five favorites my favorite, to watch right. were. And those, right. they may have a couple that are the same, but this list could be different than this list. And so I think right. that that's one like, of the We things. can say Kareem is the top, but I'm not putting on right. Kareem highlights right now. Right. It's like how I say, like, you know, like even if people say like, Jordan or LeBron is the GOAT. To me, I'll still maybe say Kobe, but I also will, Kobe will be my number one on my favorite list. Right, right. No matter what. Just like Isaiah Thomas was to be on my top five. But he's a top five ball handler, and then he's also on my top five oh, favorite. Your fa- oh, oh, your <laughs> no, favorite no, ball handler. No, no, top I put two different lists. Favorite? Okay. Hey, once I got it stamped by my top favorite, who also I think is one of the top two. He's, he's old. But when Jamal he's like Crawford, giving reverence. And once he stamped him, I feel validated. Personally, I don't care. I don't I care. Think that, I think him doing that. I should have sent like you that when, clip as soon as he said it. I, I was watching the living room. I was like, you know what? Hey, 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 that nigga speaking. No, nah, I think it's kind of like when, uh, what's the name? Uh, when Offset was on Club Shay Shay. I haven't watched him. I saw the clip where mm-hmm. he was basically saying, that was like, a good interview. He, he said, he said uh, Outcast is number one group over Migos because he feels like he has to give reverence to the people who came before him. Mm, yeah. But it's like, yes, you came before me and we like what you did. I, you, I definitely inspired me, but you ain't top five, brother. I mean, the iPhone, fi- the iPhone 14 is way better than the iPhone 2, right? Yes, I'll give you that. Even though we talk about Apple products, so it makes, in a sense, you know what I'm saying? Like, shoot. No, I'll give you that, man. All I'm saying, I felt validation. I ain't going no more with the argument. <laughs> if, he didn't say, if, he, are... if he didn't say that, I would have been like, okay, man, he actually do it in his craft. So I ain't about to, but hey, now what they were talking about that list, he also said that was his the top five best. He didn't say that was his favorite. So I mean, nah, but, Jamal Crawford, like said, if you he... want to come on and defend your case, let me know. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, man. He on Shaq. I know. Man, you got I, an issue, hour of your time. The issue, the issue is mm-hmm. they don't. The highlights are not as convincing. I will say that. That's the only issue. It's like you will have to find. It's like the whole game. You be like, dang, you got that one anchor breaker. But then he, you know, Dennis showed me all these lists of other people who got like thirty uh, anchor breakers in the first half of the quarter, or first half of the game. So it's like it's very tough. Yes, but I've always liked Isaiah Thomas, especially in that. Uh, I would say more defensive. Error, even though they I'll give you that side even of it, though, yeah. even though they're more athletic and more skilled players now, the effort of defense I would say was a little bit more paid attention to. I would say so, but but that was it. Um, I'm a I'm a I'm gonna back up on that before you start giving a list. Of, I see you what? over there working, I see you over there doing something. I was like, you know what? I will, I will, start said, hold on, hold on, up. I gotta put this on again. I was like, okay. Cause you see when we was talking back and forth, I was like, okay, let me not keep on responding. Cause after that, um, 
it's one of those like you already borderline and you're like, yeah, I'm kind of wrong, but I'm still sticking with my argument. That's where I'm at with this. So but I may be wrong, but I ain't, I ain't letting go. Man, so. so yeah. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, I know I get it though. I get it. There's been a couple times, boy. And I tell you what, I've said it before, and I need to say it again. I day near want y'all to do a whole other one, and I'll come on sometimes and guess on it. But you and Julius need to do a show called like the group chat or something like <laughs> y'all back and forth, y'all. I'm telling y'all. What do you think? I'm gonna leak the group chat. I'm gonna leak one day. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think. Uh, so he will be moving. So um, we definitely gonna have to try to get something going. Uh, Another one in person, Yo. or maybe he'll be more yeah. more flexible on the Zoom calls because, right? Yeah, man, we be going like that in in like in person too. You talking yeah. about going back and forth? Me, I'm cool with just sometimes I just be like, I got it. Or like a lot of times, like I'll be like in the middle of something, or I'll be driving. My ADHD is bad, so I'm, I'm gonna respond back to that. And the next thing I know, a couple hours thing going by, and I'm like, eh, never mind. And, bro, and so like, like, <laughs> see, the issue is yeah. I'll say something, and then like it's tough with basketball because you don't have the stats right there. Right away. So you'd be like, oh, this person is better than this, or this coach is better than this. And you're like, well, I don't really have the stats right in front of me. But Julius would be like, well, show me, prove it. And I'd be like, and on top of that, now I got to put all this together. And I'll be like, and then I'll send it. He'd be like, well, this don't prove such. I'll be like, oh my. So no, we got a lot also, of that. Like I said, man, like I think as like a hooper, as a person who actually watched the games, who watched the game, like, and don't really like, when you watch games, sometimes you don't notice the stats that are going on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And also you can see how stats don't always play into um, how good – they don't always tell the story of how good a p- player is. Right. Like, And that's the reason why a lot of times people can say things like Shaq, uh, Kobe needed Shaq, or, or, or even the other way, Shaq needed Kobe, this and that, like – or – or like they carried one or the other person, you can look at a stat or whatever and see that. Or shoot, I'll put it this way. Um, right now, LeBron has more threes than Steph Curry in the, it, it, uh, like in the se- uh, this season. So are we saying that Steph is a worse three-point shooter than LeBron because oh, yeah. of that number? Or even like, um, what's his name? Draymond Green, I think, has... <laughs> Oh, yeah, he passed like, Larry. Yeah. So are we saying that Draymond Green's a better shooter now because of that, if we're just going off stats? Yeah, definitely not. Sometimes <laughs> the stats don't always tell the whole story. I know it helps out, especially True, for us who have been there. Especially those longevity-type uh, records, because it's like, one, you know, they're allowing everybody to shoot, like, 33 per yeah. person almost. like So uh, what they were shooting like that per season almost <laughs> back then. So. Right. That that. That are even like when we talk about like those shooting records, those score or those scoring records, or even like who would average such and such a game, or now we could be like, well, this player from today is way better than the one of I know I do that a lot, but like um like how we would say maybe like an Allen Iverson or something. Yep. We're we're not taking into account that he didn't even shoot threes because A, the game wasn't played that way. A lot of coaches didn't tell people to shoot threes. Teams as a whole shot way less threes, were permitted to shoot way less threees than now. DeJounte Murray last night in a crazy win. Yes. Bro, I was stuff, on he he had 44 points on 44 shots. What coach greenlights someone to shoot 44 shots? You know what I'm saying? There's certain things that stats, uh, you know, it don't, it That's don't wild, tell the whole bro. story. I'm like, you should have had at least 60 to make the numbers yeah. look better. I was like 44, like, bro, that is, yes, 44 looks good, but when they put 44 shots, that don't look good at all. I was that means, Yeah, that means you're like 22 for 44. It's like... Something like that. Um, something, I don't know. But yeah, it's crazy. I, I, if people say like play, older players couldn't play in this era, I'm like... They would have just did what they did. They would have just... I think so. They I, think they, it. I think because some, they see the some, skill yes. level. I think because his skill level and athleticism being so drastically better this, this age, they think that nobody could play. But I'm like, if they was dunking... And going crazy on a more physical game, right. and it's less, and it was more crowded in the paint. 
Imagine with it just being one shooting guard back there defending the paint now because the center is back in, you know, on perimeter. Right. I'm like, right. AI is dominating. Michael Jordan is next I don't level. Know, he, 50 I don't, points a game. He he's will go averaging crazy. 40, he's averaging 45 to 50 points. And that's no exaggeration because also you can't get touched as much. And we can notice now when refs start messing up uh, certain players. So that was the next thing that they show how they started trying to call stuff. Like they started carrying like the Hezzy on Iverson yeah. every time, which does not get called now. And they were oh, purposely. Carries. Man, not- carries don't get called. Man, that's something that we probably have to do a whole show on. Carries, yeah. bro. I'm talking about it's not so even it's the, certain things. the quick ones. It's a whole. Yeah. Jalen Green. Or not Jalen Green. Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown. Man, he don't know how to dribble, bro. Yeah. He really don't. He only, he, he's teleporting the ball on the court. I'm like, it's, it's crazy, man. So, yeah, I stats don't tell the whole thing. I don't know where we went with that, but yeah, man. It was so, it's just been, also, it's just been so much that like we've been wanting to like talk about and discuss, and we ain't been, you know, so we ain't been on it. But uh, oh, yeah, I guess went around all that to the Kendrick thing and and uh, <laughs> and J. Cole. And this is a real conversation. This is how we bounce, man. So, right. how it, goes. <laughs> it ain't structured. It don't go when you have a conversation with somebody, it don't go. Okay, are you ready to go to the next topic? Okay, switch. It's no, you keep talking, yeah, yeah. and we just so happen to circle back. If we circle back, if not, it is what it is. So. But yeah, basically, <laughs> yo, that was a hard, like the verse fire. The beat made it so much crazier to where now I want to play that in the whip. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, man, that's what honestly, but honestly, I ain't really it. been listening. I ain't been listening to too much of it because. I've really been on my R and B. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older. Sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to hear all that rapidly rap in my in my head right now. Or yeah, rapidly rap. Oh my goodness, I, like, I, I gotta like, use that. <laughs> like sometimes I'll just be like, it'd be in the morning. I'll be just be like, I I need some smooth. Like if I'm not listening to a podcast, I need something smooth right now. It's too early for that. And so they, that's why I'll be listening to my podcast Quantum or not podcast, my playlist Quantum Chill. Uh, mm. That one, it's a yo, it's on Spotify. Check it out, y'all. Check out Quantum Chill. Everybody who heard it, they you know it takes from there. It's not. There are some like super well knowns, but then there's also mm-hmm. some. Oh, so you never heard of them, you know? In there, uh, I definitely k- try to curate, and I'll add some stuff in there whenever I'm feeling like this feels like it should be Quantum Chill, like not just yeah. you know. Yeah, I think I haven't really been listening to music a lot, bro. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, sports mm-hmm. podcasts, the Shannon Sharps, the Club Shay the the. Pivot, all those, all those we always talk about. And I'm like, I think going forward, I'm going to take a little step back. It's just, it's kind of like too overstimulated on a sports podcast where I'm like. No, for sure. It's too much. Like, it's too many. Now, we already talked about the players and stuff like that. So, but yeah, man, I'm going to definitely tap in more to the music because I'm talking about drive to work and stuff like that. Even uh, road trips, I've just been putting on those, so. Oh, uh, I have check it out. Besides, check it out, man. Get on Spotify. Check out my playlist, man. We'll do, man. What I'm going think? first. I know you love. I know you love R and B. So, oh yeah, now nah, I will say on a good Sunday, Saturday, uh, that's one of my my go to story posts is uh, old school and in the whip. Um, mm-hmm. I'm actually getting a lot of uh, feedback on that. I might have to start to turn that to something. Cause somebody man, was yo, like, oh, start, make a make, you make pay a this little song. playlist. I want to say I might playlist. have to put a little something together because a lot of people been uh, asking. Two things. One person asks, well, four women ask, why do I have so many brushes? So I have to, might have to put a little video. Might have put a little video because they don't understand the way journey. They don't understand. understand. Listen, y'all, listen, I'm taking a little break, but hey, I still, you know what I'm saying? The medium, soft, hard. I'm like, I got a way, I got a uh, shower brush. So I got to, I might have to, Uh, uh, I don't know if I'm going to put on a story, but I might do a little, little, um, I didn't do the segment on the shoe. But I might have yeah. to do a segment on the brushes because For it sure. seems like a lot of women are questioning because they was like only have two brushes, only have one main brush. So I'm like, uh, what's what's up? They all have their different purposes. See, yeah, and that's another thing. To... See, oh, I was like, y'all didn't know. Y'all ain't enough round waves. Y'all ain't got enough people with the little, little ocean on it, little something. So, see, um, not, I mean, that's big because like, see, a lot of stuff that they think dudes just do just wake up we just wake up and y'all just go right. on about the day it's like you gotta put a little do-rag take care on. of ourselves too <laughs> yeah yeah we still be doing stuff too like the waves don't just happen shoot even this we coming this out i just got to i had to do a little 
pre-treatment on my pre-scalp, uh, tea tree scalp treatment. Then I went, did the little uh, wash. Uh, first, you got to rinse that out. Then shampoo twice, put the conditioner in, then, you know, wash, whatever. And then seven minutes later, get that out. Then put the hair growth oil in, massage the scalp. Then you got to put in the, uh, the the curl cream or the moisturizer or leave-in. Get that, you know, you got to massage that in. I mean, it, it ain't just like on some like, I mean, I need to go get my edge. I need to hit up Brandon for sure. But yeah, hair health, if a dude really take care of his hair, hair and stuff, you know, and I try to get my face I think, right. I mean, we might, have to break, we might break it down. We might do a, a, a little segment um, coming up, especially with springtime. A lot of people try to get, you know, spring cleaning, try to go. You know, different different uh seasons. So we definitely gonna have to touch on that. Cause yeah, I was there's like, a whole thing to this. It's a yeah. whole thing. Even washing my hair is a little different. It's not just throw right. shampoo, wash it out, and go. It's like no, no, you gotta take, brush it in the. Yeah. I take almost just as much time as y'all. Right, okay, maybe not as much time, but I do take some time. It's still it's still a right. process. So it's uh, almost something y'all should be appreciating. Like okay, you know what we kind of go through. That's why I don't be really be tripping. Like when my wife in there, I'm saying? Doing it, oh wait, I gotta go and do this for my hair, and then I gotta do this, or I'm gonna do this for my eyelash. Hey, I get it. Yeah, growing this, up with it. sisters, I understood. I mean, at first, of course, I definitely understood. I was like, hey, I just gotta pee. I can't wait an hour till you finish your hair. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, yeah, for sure. but now I'm like, yeah, it's it's a it's a lot, um, uh, for that maintaining yourself. So what you. You come to enjoy it. I was like, I put on the old school R&B, like you said, and I get to, I call it self-care Sunday. That's usually with my day. I try to do that. And then sure. um, yeah. sometime in the middle of the week. But all right, man, I'm going to have to yeah, wrap yeah. this one up soon. I do want to say sure. I am going to a comedy show today, tonight. Okay. Um, it's out of town, Columbia, doing a, it's going to be the 85 South show, Carlos Miller, Chico, um, DC Unfly. Mike Epps and Lil Duval are all gonna be there. So that gonna, yeah. that gonna be I a, got invited to go to the Gary Owens tonight, but I ain't, I don't think I might miss it. Yeah. Cause, cause of work. Know. Only because of work. Only because of work. That's it. I think he's funny, but I think some of his stuff I'll be like, it's like yeah. I don't laugh as hard with his stuff, I'll say. But he is funny. For sure. Yeah. Um, Shoot. Before we I'll bounce, before we bounce, of course. Yeah, I mean that's that should be cool. Um, we definitely gonna try to get this back going. I know Sunday gonna be Easter. Uh I'm mean, actually gonna be out of town, but we'll still try to record during the week. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, man, quick, 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 quick shout out. Who you got? Who you got? Okay, I don't know if I shouted them out all right, but already I think I did. But I'm gonna do it again. Culture Misfits. I think so. But black, yeah, black so. owned clothing clothing line. Uh, actually, a woman that did that, so it's also another fitting thing for the month. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, they. I just bought a new varsity jacket. I really got a. I have a lot of shoes, but I don't style my shoes. If I say so, I kind of wear the same type of saying, yeah. same type of fit. I just threw a different shoe, so I'm trying to do something different. So I bought a varsity jacket from them. It was expensive, but it was on sale. That's said email said extended. They extended the sale, and I reached out to them on IG, and I was like, um, "Yeah, I was gonna get this, but the sale ended, and then they extended the sale." Okay, I might be a little selfish. Maybe it was just for me, but it might have been for other people. <laughs> But it felt like they extended the sale for your boy. So that's the only reason right, I wanted right, right. to reach out for it. Because they did reach out and was like, hey, we extended the sale. Um, you should be able to buy it now type of deal. So, uh, of course, they got thousands of people uh, following them or shopping on them. So it probably wasn't just for me. They probably just trying to get sales up or promotion during that window. But um, it did feel like they kind of did that for me. So I'm going to keep it like that. Uh, it's one of those, another validation yeah. for your boy for the weekend. So... Shout out to Coach okay. Misfits. Uh, who you got, man? Uh, I'm going to do my quick comic one. Uh, New Era Comics. Uh, look them up on Instagram. New Era Comics LLC. They are a smaller uh, one, of course. But, you know, long live the hustlers. I really like the way I really like the way it looks. Um, I like the way uh, art, the, the techniques. I'm a fan already. I'm an early fan to this. So, yeah. New Era Comics. Uh, look them up. And then one more. Um, I'm, I mean, we've definitely talked about her on the show a few different times, but uh, Chandelier, she's actually moving um, to a bigger, a bigger uh, location. Um, yep, I saw grand that. Grand opening, yep. I believe, is next week. Um, but yeah, Skin is in studios, definitely. And everybody in the Wichita area, uh, book with her, get online uh, in the socials. You know, you already know I'm going to put it in the description, but. 
Um, yeah, skin is in.com. Skin is in studio. Sorry. Um, but yeah, all, for all your facials, waxing, everything. Um, sorry, crypto is being a little loud today. Um, but yeah, other than that, oh, also, the I guess most important for me, uh, online training is fully active. Uh, definitely message me for uh, to get your uh, to get your membership. Um, I'm only doing ninety nine nine or hundred dollars a month, uh, and that's full plan with videos with all that the weekly check ins, uh, and of course, if you do more months at a time, there is a discount there. So definitely hit me up for that. I can get you right, even if you don't live next to me. We just do that, and it sends an app to your phone, and it has all the workouts for for your, for for the day. So, um, yeah. That's nice. That's your boy, that's Dino Fit Dennis. I mean, that's could be it, y'all. Y'all gotta get on that for sure. Cause it's one of the things you can't keep complaining, like, hey, I don't got nobody next to me, or I don't want to go to the gym or something like that. It's like if you got I don't know what I'm doing. If you need some a guidance, I like, yeah. I mean, that's how our friendship started because I needed some guidance, and you know, um mm-hmm. so but yeah. For sure. Yeah, so, man. Yeah, man. You gonna go ahead and get out of here. Good show. Whether we whether we chat like bros or I debate you like an enemy, it's all fun and games. Just match my energy. And we out. Just match my energy. Just match my energy. Yeah.